you da 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 di di da 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 you should be i think bigger than you are and who could you compare me to in uganda who who really you go ask a million who apas is you go ask baba cool go ask bobby white Chetirivo, my people, it's another week with another great artist here in Kampala, Uganda. This is Apus. How are you, my dear? I'm okay. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for inviting me to your home and your office. I, one of the things I really like about you and your brand is that you're versatile. I think I knew about Apus, but until I heard you in the song with Avril, I, there was a way you were rapping in the song, delivering the song, but it, it came out differently. Uh it 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 comes down to the sound like I've really came up with a song that felt like that and whenever I listen to a song it takes me somewhere I'm not really a kind of artist who wants to sing the same way because I am on I, I am this dancehall artist too I'm that I'm just a musician and I feel like um art is limitless so that's why you find that kind of sound you don't find it by mistake but it's by design that that's how I envision the music and when i'm making music that's how i want to see things work yeah based on your answer i, I feel like it would be interesting to see you on more collaborations yeah. because we probably will just see a different apas depending on the vibe of the artist and the song um tell me about um any more collabs that you're planning maybe uh collabs are kind of many nowadays i'm i'm actually trying to empower the younger artists mm -hmm. i have a song with uh, dr brain very good songwriter very good uh, artist as well i have another one with uh, viper ranking i have other projects i am working on a couple of projects with saint nelly said i'm working with waves from the uk it's a group and uh, so many more projects i'm 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 not seated around to 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 enjoy music with just myself you know that's lyric that's like lyrical masturbation uh, but um, we're trying as much as possible <laughs> to make sure that um, we're working with other people. It's like actually trying to work on with a couple of uh, Randy's artists. Yes, two, like on one project with APAS. Then we have others that are singles as well. Some projects that will be done in Kenya. We're looking at a couple of projects that have been done in Tanzania with a couple of artists already. Since you've had, I would say some important releases that i feel were really good for the uh, for the brand and showed us a different side of apas <laughs> one of the songs is uh, guliwano i love the song i love it so much and the song is fun as well because it has lyrical jokes okay guliwano says you touched the wrong part so just touch here and don't let me go just hold here you know like where you wrote, it did not really come out well. So change the pen and see the difference. You know, change the pen, use me because I'm the one. So I'm saying Guliwano, which says it's here. Your love is actually here. So I'm just telling this girl, your love is here. Stop playing around with all these boys and come and enjoy. I'm fun. So basically, that's what the song is talking about. So it's, it's a love song, and um, it's fun. The whole song is fun. If you really understand the whole song, it, 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 it even becomes more better. Like if you have the meaning of the song, it becomes more... Now I, now I can imagine when I see the girls running around. I think there's some moments when you love a song and then when you see the video, it even makes you love the song more. And this is a perfect example of a video that made me love a song more. It's just a fun video. Yeah, the, the whole project actually had uh, a couple of um, outfits. If you saw, like, um, the, the, the whole idea was uh, to have, like, a Chinese feel. It's the martial arts feel. Yes, the martial arts feel. We had, like, that outfit that had red and yellow, the whole overall. We had, like, designers here actually designed the outfits for the, the sets that we are actually going to work on. And um, it just felt good, like... We went there, I just wanted that video to be fun. I didn't want a storyline whereby like we're having so much going on. I wanted it to be chroma, so we actually did like on a white screen, like on, on screen, so, so that we get something different. I just wanted it to be fun. Ladies shaking, me dancing, Sessa Bat dancing. That was fun, the whole video was fun. And There's another song of yours which is actually doing really great in Kenya, Dee Dee Dada. Dee Dada. Dee Dada. Dee Dada. Yeah. You di da 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 di 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 da da da. Yeah, it's also a love song actually, but still fun as well. It's not really still there. It's like Guliwano, but done different. Like it's fun. 
why do I have a feeling that even Ugandans are yet to see APAS in a different light? I just feel like with the type of songs I've heard and the videos I've seen from you in the recent past, you should be, I think, bigger than you are and more celebrated. And when I was looking at the video of Guliwan, I was like, I think we should be at half a million views. But I think we're about 200,000, which is not bad. Yeah, it's not bad, but uh, Ugandans are accustomed to bad music. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> so when you have like cool stuff, they kind of feel like you're showing off or something. Which is weird, like I find it weird, it's just enviousness. The enviousness is even in the people themselves. I see so many people even on my social media who say, oh, you're, you're not all that good. But, but, but who could you compare me to in Uganda? Who, who really? Even the artists know. This, they know, they meet me and they tell me. It's a fact. You go ask a million who APAS is. You go ask Beba Cool. Go ask Bobby Wine. I, just, I would want you to actually know what they would say because they would have to speak out. If you ask them, what do you think about that guy? Some may try to say, oh, he's a funny dude, but they know the music is on a different level. And so do their fans. They know. But the problem is that sometimes when you do things that are a little not, um, not the type of things people consume, they try to feel like you're an alien. And this happens a lot in Uganda, but at the same time, there are so many people who like my vibe. They just pretend. It's pretense. So keep pretending, but I know you like it. So I feel like people don't watch me, but they watch me. You know how people like your picture, but they don't like it? But they like it. They know they like it. They saw it. So that's it. And on the views part of it, Uganda's internet is not really that good. It's expensive in one way or another. And there are so many other things that here, OTT and whatever, which we stood for because we felt like it's too much. So some people are not really on the internet. So I wouldn't blame just the fans. I think if they feel like my song should be in 200 views and not 1 million, it's fine. I do not work for views. I've never worked for that. I do this music because I care. I live good, I eat good, everything is good. So when you think about it, you have to focus on the people who like. And there are so many people who vibe with the songs. So I'm all in for the people who care. You know? Because I've seen conversations where people say, oh, if an artist comes to Uganda, people are always thinking about me to work with that person. Not any other artist. So why should they pick me and don't pick other people? And yet when they listen to my music, they say probably it's not good enough. Or they don't pay too much attention. They pay attention. They think I'm too good for them. So it's a problem for them, not for me. So I'm good. I'll keep doing what I do and they'll keep doing what they do. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that attitude. I really love it that it doesn't matter how many people proclaim their love for me. I love me. I love my work. And I'll continue doing my work to the best of my personal satisfaction. I love, I love that. I really tell people like on uh, TVs or like radios or whatever, I usually don't tell them uh, what I go through. Genuinely, looking at, um, looking at my kind of music and how I do stuff, I've seen so much resistances out there. You'll find certain managers of artists or certain artists pay money to radios not to play your music or to DJs. That's the level of bad mind. Like people are ready to make sure that they make it very hard for you because they know you're doing something good. Second thing, they'll spread rumors around like in people who are inf influential that maybe book shows and they're like, that guy charges 20 million Ugandan money, which has it just this. So they, they make sure that the prices are actually up there, up in the roof so that that person feels like, ah, oh, Doug, I don't need to contact that guy. That guy is so expensive. You know, so they make it difficult for you. But at the end of the day, it's okay. We still say it's okay. Because whenever you try to stop my food in one angle, I go in another one. My music sells online. I get money. I get endorsements. I work for companies. They like me. Why don't they use other artists? They find it cool to work with APA. So why not? It's still good money. We still make the money that we would have made on shows. So in the end, if, if you stop the shows, we're going to find another way. And we're actually even singing in schools because that's the audience. Nice. 
So funny enough, you find people say, oh, you're no longer singing on big shows. Now you're singing in schools. Do you know that schools pay me more than big shows? <laughs> well, those kids really love me. And they want A-pass. I don't even post most of them when I go there. <laughs> I go to universities and speak. No, but that's amazing that they're paying you. I would think like they don't actually pay you to or somebody to perform at schools because they will always be like, come and talk to these kids. They look up to you. I did not actually know that they would they be paid. They even pay me to come and talk. Most schools pay me to come and talk, actually, more than even to go and sing. Though I have to sing, you know, and give them a vibe. But I'm paid to talk. I'm paid even to go to universities. It's just because I may not say too much about what I do all the time. Like, oh, you know what? I go and do this. I go and do that. How would I live the life I live? How would I keep up if I'm not actually working and I'm not doing stuff? So I'm doing stuff. It's just not the usual. You cannot go to a school and tell a director of a school who likes how I speak, who likes how I reason, that I'm not supposed to come to that school and talk to his kids and is ready to pay 1,000 US dollars for me to just come and talk. Yes. Now for you, you're going for a show and you're paid 1.5 million, which is good. You go and jump around, but you're not educating anyone. And even your music probably is talking crap. He's talking about yourself, how, how your, your head is harder than a spoon, or oh, you're harder than a rock. You get me? And this is the kind of music people have. So personally, I feel like there's more to educate than actually just sing. Because singing is one thing I can do, but even with the music, I try to use it to communicate something that is even deep. Some of my songs are really teaching songs. Mariana is about AIDS. You know, it's one of those big songs even in Tanzania, and yet it's a typical Uganda song, you know, but it's talking about AIDS. Why don't we talk about real issues? The music is very, 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 very um, disposable nowadays. Looking at the industry, I feel like we're going backwards. We don't even see it because people look at what's cool. People don't listen to what they like. People listen to what is promoted to them. Whatever they hear so many times starts feeling good. Even if a song is so bad, the more you listen to it, you start saying, it's actually really good. When there's no art around it, no nothing. It's just crap. But um, that's the industry we're in. How I wish people would look at music and forgot beats. Just don't look at a beat and actually listen to the lyrics. That's why we put out lyric videos. I want people to actually read and say, he makes sense here. How many people put out lyrics videos here? They can't because the lyrics is shit. Excuse my French. Bon. Actually, my next question was going to be about your songwriting. And I wanted you to break it down for me a bit. Because based on the songs I've heard of APAS and I loved, I had a feeling and I knew that you're a great songwriter and it's something that you, you, you're good at and something that you can actually say I'm a songwriter because not all the artists are writing songs for themselves. Tell me about that. Have you explored like writing songs from, for other artists? I've written for Carl Wolf, the Canadian artist. I've written for a couple of artists in the UK. I've written for a couple of artists in America. I had some of them I don't break names. I've written for so many in Uganda. I've written for Bebe Cool. I've written for Cindy. Cindy, I wrote High Hook back then. Um, I've written for Jackie. I've written for Lillian. I've written for Michael Ross. I've written for so many artists.